Hi, and welcome to the first of what I hope will be a number of installments of Frank and Mayor here in uh, Hopkinton. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an uh, elder law attorney. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. Uh, that's my day job. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's really about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center over the last few years and seen presentations that I've done, uh, you've seen me talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And you've, we've told, I've told you the, their goal in life is to live in their house till they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they live in Hopkinton, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to go live with their kids. They don't want to do, they want to, they want to stay in Hopkinton. So the question is, who are the people they need to know? What are the programs they need to know about in order to live kind of happily ever after right here in Hopkinton? So because I'm from out of town, um, I asked um, a great uh, in-town person who's been here for, for now for quite a while at the Senior Center, my friend Amy Beck, to co-host this show. Um, and of course, Amy was nervous about this, right? This is our first show, <laughs> it's right? It's our first this show is, together. This so we'll is see. very exciting. You know, so we haven't, we, we don't want to have any like song and dance routines for no, tonight. No, thank goodness, no, you don't no. want that. This is kind of like more mellow. But, but um, Amy did find a great initial guest for us to talk to. So we're going to talk to, um, to him a little bit. Exactly. And then I'm going to ask Amy at the end to talk a little bit about kind of what's going on at the Senior Center, maybe what we're going to be doing in the future with the show. Amy, who did you bring on? Well, I brought uh, John Neese, the principal assessor at the uh, in Hopkinton, and we're excited to have him because he's been working really hard on getting us a lot of information about um, programs available for seniors, and he can actually take it off and, and go with it. I think. Which is a, it, and it's a huge piece, right? It is a huge if you're, piece. If you're if you're Frank and Mary and you're living in your house, by the way. Maybe one of your biggest bills is your tax bill. Exactly. Here and in so, Hopkinton. And so you really want to, I don't want to say you want to suck up to the assessor, but you really want to <laughs> know the assessor and find out what the rules of the road are. And right. So that's great. Well, and, and you don't have to butter him up because he's been great over the past year. He's put together this Senior Solutions Guidebook. Um, and so it oh. has all sorts of options that, that are available to seniors as far, and, and other individuals, I guess, but primarily to seniors um, that, that can help them with their taxes. So. That's great. That's great. great. So he's going to talk to us about it. So, so the senior, the, the guidebook. Oh, so first of all, once again, though, I'm from out of town. Are, are, you, are you from Hopkinton? How did you end up in Hopkinton? I live in Franklin. Yeah. Um, I worked as a uh, licensed uh, real estate appraiser for about 30 years. Um, before I transitioned to assessing, I went to work in Norfolk. Uh, for six years, and then have been in Hopkinton now for uh, for four years. So you've been here for a while. Been here for a right? while. Enough to meet a lot of the folks. Know how the system works. Love right? the town. Yeah. This, is, this is great. So yep. you know, good morning, um, anyway, and thank you for the invitation. Um, just before we get to the guidebook, uh, you had asked me to briefly talk about what is assessing and what it is that we do. Uh, yes. This could take uh, 30 minutes or more, so um, you know I'll I'll try to be brief. And by the way, so we answer the average person's question. I don't get any services. How come I have to pay so much money? Right. <laughs> this is right, the basic assessing question. Right? Exactly. So you know, to assess uh, is really to value property for taxation purposes. So, you know, that's that's uh, that's really what it is, um, and that is what we do. We have um, you know fair and equitable assessments on property in Hopkinton. Um, the tax revenue funds about 70% of the town budget every year. We have about 6,700 uh, properties in Hopkinton that we value. Uh, about 4,500 of those are single families. We have almost 1,000 condominium units now. And then the rest of those are either multifamily properties or commercial or industrial um, properties or, uh, or chapter land. But um, we do quite a, quite a number of things. In addition to valuing that, we have about uh, 350 personal property accounts. Uh, we also deal with tax exemptions, which will shortly be the focus of our presentation today. Uh, and we also deal with, um, with motor vehicle um, bills and, uh, and abatements. So uh, we want to be sure that we have accurate and reliable information on all of those properties. Um, we, uh, we need to verify all of our calendar year sales, which is a requirement of the Department of Revenue. Um, we deal with uh, what's called cyclical inspections, where we try and look at every property in town once every 10 years to make sure that our data is accurate. 
Uh, we deal with building permits. We deal with new construction. We deal with uh, we deal with growth. Uh, we deal with chapter applications um, and water and sewer betterments and uh, and about a list as well. So we a follow a gigantic ahead. range of stuff. <laughs> yeah. range of stuff. It is quite a bit. Uh, we, uh, we use this book, which is really the Massachusetts General Laws, and this uh, has the statutes that relate to uh, real estate valuation and, uh, and real estate taxation. And we try and be as informative about all of these issues with the residents as possible. So, for example, we have on our website um, a sheet which explains to the residents why we have to look at their property on that cyclical inspection uh, and, uh, basis. Uh, I would like to just share with you, this is a quote from uh, tax court judge Carlisle Roberts back from 1974. And he said that the whole subject of appraisal or assessing property, it's not an art, it's not a science, in my opinion, it's a mystery. So, uh, you know, we're trying to sort of maybe simplify a little bit of that today. So I would like to go to this uh, Senior Solutions Guidebook. So this is something that, um, that our office put together. And, and by the way, is this online or can yes. people get a hard copy it, of it? It is online yeah. on both the town website page and on the assessor's page. Yeah. Uh, and it's also available in hard copy for seniors who don't like to or don't want to use a computer. So it actually yeah. will look like this. And with help, yep. we'll oh, so you will this. be giving them out then? Or What's is that? it just to look at or is that to actually have? Because <clears throat> well, we get that question. Well, the kind of, kind of this <laughs> thick. So at this point, we have one in our office. You right. have one at the senior center. I mean, yep. we could certainly talk about making copies, but there's probably a lot of information in the guidebook that seniors uh, wouldn't relate to right. or wouldn't be relevant for them. So, right. But uh, we can certainly talk about that issue. So if they um, get lost today, they can always go to the guidebook because a lot of this stuff is going to be in the guidebook. They could go to the okay. guidebook and they could do one other thing. So, so I'd they like can to come see it at your office or they can come to the senior center and take a look at it. That so. is correct. Or go online, which is the best way for them to do right. it if they do like to use a computer because then in the leisure of their kitchen or whatever, they can, uh, they can spend as much time as they need to. I would like to uh, recognize, though, my deputy assessor, Ruth Anderson, and my administrative assistant, Stuart Cotter. Um, I always say that they do all the work and I get all of the credit. <laughs> but, um, you know, anyone who has questions about today's program. That's a great idea. You brought your phone number. I brought it's, This is the phone terrific. number that of the assessor's Point department. that to a camera. So yes. 508 497 9720. Now, as we talk about this, so, anyone, so if, your, if your phone rings off the hook, that will tell us our viewership. Exactly. That, that, that's that's so, we'll so let know. us know. Let us know. That's right. Um, before we get into some of the programs, I would like to say that every year, Stuart will automatically send out an application to everyone in Hopkinton who has had an exemption in the previous year. Now, if you haven't had an exemption, you'd want to call this phone number and yep. talk to Stuart or, Ruth, uh, Stuart or Ruth. And if you're having a problem filling out or mm -hmm. understanding the applications, they can certainly guide you through that as well. Stuart has gone on occasion to the Senior Center to do a presentation, uh, and there might even be an occasion, um, you know, based on someone's um, you know, physical condition where he might actually be willing to go to their house and help them with the application. So they're the best people to get the help with. We have the information, we have yep. the book, but, but the questions really are best for right. your office. Let, let me ask you a related sure. question. So if you're applying, is there one time of the year where, where all the exemptions get applied for or, or do different exemptions, are the deadlines, this being the Commonwealth, do they, do they, are the deadlines different for different the, There exemptions? is generally a deadline of April 1st for every exemption, but mm -hmm. one of the exemptions we're going to talk about will have an August 31st exemption each year. Okay. Uh, and then the senior work program that we'll talk about actually runs through September or October of the year. Yep. The reason why I mention that is like, for, so next year we may actually want to have somebody come on maybe like a month before for the right. exemption deadline or do a presentation at the senior center just to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, we did get them in this year, so that was good. That's great. They That's did great. a great program for That's us. Great. So. so first in general, and again, um, you know, in the guidebook, um, there are several exemptions that are available for seniors, uh, surviving spouses, for veterans, several different classes of exemption, uh, for uh, blind persons, uh, and then there are uh, senior exemptions and there's a tax deferral type of program. Now, they all do have different income and asset requirements, so um, I don't think we want to confuse people at this point and run through all of that, but the information, again, is in 
in print um, on this handout, which is uh, in the guidebook. The exemptions generally go from 250 per person to $1,000 per person, depending upon the program. And this would uh, be a, an amount that gets subtracted right off of your tax bill. That's correct. This isn't a reduction from the assessment. So it's a major, that's a big deal. It that's is. A big deal. And, and can they apply to multiple? Can, can multiple apply to them, or you have to pick and choose which ones? Um, you usually cannot get more than one exemption, but there are some exceptions okay. to that. Um, so, for example, um, someone who has an exemption could also work in the senior work program that we will talk about. Okay. Uh, but I would like to say, even though I mentioned that generally from 250 to 1,000, yeah. uh, that can go as high as $1,750 over time because of some of the local options that uh, the town of Hopkinton has adopted at town meeting. And we actually have one exemption, um, one case at this point, where the exemption goes to the full amount of the real estate tax bill, which is $7,000. That is um, a surviving spouse of a, a veteran who was killed uh, in during service. So, oh, and once again, that's the kind of trivia. Who would know? You I know. know. Who would? Say, John does. Right. <laughs> now, we have at this point in Hopkinton about seventy-five different exemptions that we grant. Um, you know, to the amount of about $75,000 per year. So, I mean, that's about 1000 but again, some of them would be less, some of them, um, some of them would, be, uh, would be more. And, and of the exemptions, that, are those just exemptions that are, that are being obtained by seniors, or is that exemptions across the board, that 75 exemptions? I'm just curious. Well, it's, it's, it's essentially seniors, but some of them are, are veterans. Um, we have uh, 27... Uh, 28, 35, we have about 35 that are veterans, we have three that are blind, we have uh, 19 uh, that are seniors, we have uh, two that defer their taxes, which we, uh, which we will also talk about. So, uh, in the interest of time, um, what I thought we would do is um, concentrate on one, two, three, four, uh, five of the different um, available exemptions. Uh, and again, just before I start on that, we also uh, try and put together an addition to the guidebook. We had the uh, Hopkinton 101 uh, mm -hmm. session at the public library not too long ago with all the different town departments, and we put together a little bit of a brochure, again, on the exemptions, um, you know, which explains uh, those to folks. So, uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is the uh, is the tax relief fund. Now, the tax relief fund is not administered by the assessor's department. There is actually a tax relief committee uh, in town uh, that does this, uh, and generally they um, give uh, six hundred dollars um, to an applicant that qualifies could be a little less, could be a little more. It essentially depends on the amount of funds that they receive from year to year. And they do expend all of the money that they receive. They receive that money basically in three ways. So this little notice goes out with the tax bill and it asks residents in town, you know, who can afford to, to donate anywhere from a dollar to $25 or more to the tax relief fund when they pay their tax bill. So that's one way. Uh, they are also, <clears throat> the committee is also given a number for the Boston Marathon, which generally I think raises about $5,000. Mm -hmm. And I would like to recognize um, the New England Laborers Training Trust Fund, which is here in Hopkinton. Uh, they have given a $10,000 donation this year to um, the tax relief fund. Uh, and this is really one of the ways or one of the funds that helps uh, senior citizens, um, you know, to afford to stay in their house. This is great. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is great. So this is in addition to all the other state exemptions and everything else. This mm -hmm. is just folks, literally folks in Hopkinton kind of taking care of themselves. Throwing, you know, th throwing some, some folks that are, that are located here and people who are just throwing in money That's to correct. help out other people from Hopkinton. What a great well, idea. and I think the thing that I'd, I want to say is, you know, everyone thinks of Hopkinton for the schools, but I want Hopkinton to be re recognized as a place to retire. And these mm -hmm. exemptions and these tax credits that people can get really help make that possible. That's huge. And I, and I would like to say that, it, at least in my opinion, the town manager and the board of selectmen are very much in favor of helping seniors yes. um, to whatever extent they can. And I'll explain a little bit of that as we go on. But again, the tax relief fund is not administered through the assessor department, but we did put it in the guidebook so people would have um, an explanation of the fund and a copy of the application. Um, and we'll be able to go from there. Um, the next one I'd like to talk about uh, just briefly is called the BRAVE Act. 
and I don't like to read too much, but I would like to read this. So Governor Baker on August 28th of 2018 signed the BRAVE Act, B-R-A-V-E, an act relative to veterans' benefits, rights, appreciation, validation, and enforcement uh, to strengthen services and support for the veterans of the Commonwealth. And recently at town meeting, there were a number of different articles that were adopted by local option to, uh, to help veterans. One of those is a senior work program similar to uh, the next item that we're, we're going to address now. So it's so. an additional senior work program? Yes. I see. So um, the senior work off abatement program I'd like to just chat about a little bit. So um, residents can volunteer their time. Uh, to the town. They're paid at the rate of $12 an hour, which is currently the, the minimum wage um, in, uh, in the state. Uh, and they can work up to an amount of $1,500, which they would receive as a credit on their tax bill. Um, they don't have to work that much. There are some people that work to $1,500. There are some people that work fewer hours. There are some people that volunteer their services even after they reach the maximum. And, you know, when I said earlier that I do think the town manager um, and the selectmen are very much in favor of programs that would help seniors, um, when that program first started by statute, it was only a $500 um, tax credit. Uh, it changed to $750, which was the maximum amount just a mm -hmm. couple of years ago in Hopkinton. My department went to a Board of uh, Selectmen meeting and we asked them to raise it to either 1000 or 1500 1500 being the maximum. I didn't know what they would choose to do since we were at 750 but um, without hesitation they went to the maximum amount of uh, $1,500. So, uh, so that is now in place. And that's taken right off of their taxes. So it's not like they receive a check or anything like that. That it is goes correct. Right off. So it's not subject to withholding and FICA and all of this other jazz either. It's, it's just a, it's a it's well, that I don't know, right? There's uh, yeah, that I'm not sure of either, but there is some literature in here that there has been some controversy about that issue, about, and I don't about know what the, tax, what the tax ramification is. Quite and, and, and if you're a senior, so where do you apply? If, as, a, as a practical, I just, that's well, one of those you can, as a practical matter. I think there's a couple places. Uh, the Senior Center, you can definitely come and get an application and fill that out, and then we will, we have to run a, a background check, and uh, other than that, you know, once you do that, there is a wait list currently, which we're working on and then hoping to change. Um, but we certainly would take your volunteering before that's up. But um, just yep. we would definitely let them know when um, they could start getting that credit. Um, I see. And while there are se many seniors who do this at the senior center, there are others that do it in other town departments. In other town departments. Um, so right now, a lot of them people come and want to volunteer, and then they hear about the tax credit, and we can. When there's a space available, um, they can certainly move into that. That's great. And that's a big number. Once again, $1,500. It is a big number. It is a big number. It is. Right. We actually have people in the finance department who come in to help us, especially at tax time when people are sort mm -hmm. of lined up at the window to pay their tax bill. Or they help uh, with the voting at the, with the clerk's department. The but I have to yeah. say, we, we're very happy at the Senior Center to have anyone who comes because it is a huge uh, help to us as far as what we do every day. So. It makes it look like you've got a ton of staff. It does and make I us look like <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we've got a lot of people working, but it's a great right. place. But it's so. a great place. It's a great place. So. And well, it also helps with, uh, with departments when someone mm -hmm. is out on uh, you know, sick, sick time yeah. or right. uh, you know, holiday or vacation or something like that. And they're not put someplace that they're not capable of doing it. So we're not going to put you in a position where if you are not computer literate that you have to be on the, the computer. Check. So right. we certainly right. find the right spot. So the next one I would just like to mention, and again, these are only a portion of the ones that are available, uh, but the next one I'd like to talk about is the tax deferral program. Um, it is not widely used. We have a population in Hopkinton of 17,000 people. We only have two residents right now are in tax deferral. So this is known as uh, Clause 41A. Um, you know, and we do want to be clear, um, it's, an, it's an issue where you can delay the payment of your property taxes. It is not an exemption. So unfortunately, we can't, uh, you know, not let you pay your taxes at some point. But, you know, people that, um, you know, residents that don't have the financial means, uh, there are some qualification requirements, again. Uh, and the bank, if you have a mortgage on the property, has to subordinate to, uh, you know, to the town being first in line to, uh, to get the payment. But you can actually defer a portion or the total amount, if you qualify, of your annual tax bill. 
Um, my aunt, for example, she doesn't live in Hopkinton, but she was in a tax deferral program um, to the tune of like $30,000 over a period of time. And what happens is that then becomes a lien on the property and that is paid when, you know, the resident passes away or, you know, when the house is sold. So, you know, it's a good program. Um, some people don't like to use it because they don't like to put a burden on their children or whoever leaving the property mm -hmm. to. But um, if it's a program you qualify for and if you're having some financial issues, um, you know, it's certainly a um, very good program to be able to defer your taxes. It's a, oh, big, deal. It's a big deal. I, rep I recommend this highly to a lot of clients. You know, if you're Frank and Mary, you want to live in your house until you die. And, and, and after food, if, unless you're really sick, your biggest bill is often your tax mm -hmm. bill. So to be able to do that, and what I, I explain to them, I say, look, this is, this is basically the town giving you a reverse mortgage. Mm -hmm. the, the town's basically lending you some money, right? And they're saying, I don't know what the, do you, do you happen to know what the current rate is, what the, 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 the interest rate is that they charge? Because that varies from town to town. Yeah, right? I think it's actually 8% and, and we are trying to, um, to there's, there's some language I think at the state legislature right now to try and reduce that to 4%. So that, so that, so that you're paying, but, but the point is there's no bill, it's right. due when you die, right? Or if you sell, right. so it's it's ideal for a person who's on a fixed income. There's no a and the other there's no asset restriction, right? right. It isn't because you've got a lot of other assets you can't qualify, and it gets rid of your biggest monthly. You know, oftentimes well, just, one of your biggest bills. I think it takes the pressure off knowing that there's a way to defer it, so mm -hmm. that you're not having to think about it every month. I mean, am I going to choose food or am I going to choose my taxes? Right. That's not right. even in the picture, so exactly. that's good. So it's, yeah. it's wonderful program. You know, and, and make. Make no mistake about it, Hopkinton is an expensive place to live. It's mm -hmm. an expensive place to live in terms of real estate values because it's a very attractive town. I mean, people like the open space. They, they like the school system, which is a very good reputation. They, they like the services that the town has to offer. But unfortunately, that does increase the value of the property. So, you know, the reason for all of these different exemption programs or deferral programs is to try and help people who need it, you know, to the greatest extent that we can. So. Um, you know, we do have, uh, we do often have the question, um, I don't want to go off subject, but we often have the question, why can't we just um, let seniors pay half of their tax bill? Why can't we give them a 50% discount or something like that? But, you know, unfortunately, when you go back to the statutes that we have to adhere to, there is nothing like that in the law that, that can be done. So, you know, these are the way that we can try and help them as much as possible. And I would like to talk about just one last program. Um, this is the means tested. Uh, Senior exemption program. I kind uh, just of throw that up. Look, make look, look that down. Sure. <laughs> Means tested. Good. Thank you. So again, this is the information on this, um, and the application is in this notebook. Uh, we've also had sort of had this scrolling on the TV screen as you walk into town hall. Uh, this is the one that uh, the application is due by August 31st. So as we said, the other ones, all of the other ones, um, with the exception of the senior work off, is April 1st um, yeah. as the cutoff date to get your paperwork in for the exemption. This one is August 31st. We have not received an application at this point, but I certainly hope that we will. Um, I'd like to say just a couple of things. So again, in terms of the governance of the town of Hopkinton being very um, interested in their senior citizens. In order to offer this program, uh, Hopkinton had to go through a home rule petition with the Mass State Legislature. It took about a year or so. There are only half a dozen communities in the Commonwealth right now that offer this type of program, so Hopkinton being one of that, I think we should be proud of that. Um, and the amount of the exemption, if again, if you were to qualify here, uh, would be anywhere from basically $500 to $2,200. So the way that it works is it's tied into the state circuit breaker program. The mm -hmm. circuit breaker amount for last year was $1,100. In the fall, we need to go before the Board of Selectmen, and they have the option of selecting 50% to 200% of that amount. So 1,100, basically half, 500, five and a quarter, 550, 550 yeah. whatever it is, to two times that amount, 2,200. So I can't tell you what the exemption will be. I mm -hmm. suppose it depends on how many applications there are. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's, um, it's a program for Hopkinton to be proud of. There is a pending legislation um, at the State House right now to make this um, 
um, statewide, but whether that will pass or not, I don't know. Because so. we're one of the first, is that correct? We are one of the first. So, um, I, mean, I mean, I think what's great is Hopkinton's doing everything it can to help seniors and, and with all these options, but this is another one that they've gone out of their way to make sure that it's available to you. So take advantage of it and definitely call and, and get in touch with the assessor's office, I think is the biggest step. Um, and and it, they can walk you through everything. Absolutely. So. And again, it's, you know, we're not the most expensive community in the state, but, you know, our, our values are, are um, you know, pretty, pretty significant. Uh, Concord has this, Wayland has this, um, Wakefield, I think it's either Reading or North Reading. Uh, Sudbury has something like this. So there are a, a few other communities, but mm -hmm. not that many at this point. Framingham and... Um, Westboro and Holliston all called me recently to ask about, to ask about our this. procedure mm -hmm. and you know, going through this. the legislature and things. So. so I think that that's a very good way for us to summarize this. When in doubt, call these folks. Right. There are a number of programs that, you're, that you may very well not be a, a, aware of, either to reduce your taxes or at least to defer them. If you're like Frank and Mary, you want to stay at home until you die, which means you, you, you don't want to be driven out of your house or think you need to sell your house just because of the taxes. Right. Thank you very much. You're quite it thank was you, just, John. This was just wonderful, You're wonderful. Welcome. Thank you, Amy. Sure, thank you. I'm sure the beginning of a number of hey, excellent there we go. Uh, presentations here. <laughs> no. Thank you very much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. Thank you. of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life.